happened in Tokyo a couple of days ago. The U.S. men's basketball team defeating France 87-82 to win their fourth straight Olympic gold medal. They defeated the French by five. They obviously lost to this French national team in the opening game of, of group play just two weeks ago, 83 to 70 to 75. But this is the interesting thing about this national team and something that I saw because clearly the U.S. was the better team. The, the score doesn't accurately depict and accurately portray the talent gap that existed between the U.S. men's team and the France uh, the, and the France national team. And I made this point last week that the issue with the United States was never about personnel. It was never about the fact that we didn't bring our quote unquote elite A team. That was never the issue. It was never about a lack of competitiveness. It was never about a lack of patriotism or a lack of care. You don't make an NBA roster. You don't make it into the NBA without competitiveness. If you are deprived of that competitive gene, you don't make the US Olympic team without a true passion and desire and purpose without a true desire to win and compete for a gold medal. You just don't do that. As I said before, the issue with the U.S. men's basketball team was with their approach, was with their game plan. It's as simple as that. Because the U.S. played throughout the majority of the tournament into the hands of these foreign countries. They played into the strengths of these foreign countries, which was playing team-oriented basketball, sharing the rock, facilitating, passing, ball movement, essentially playing without a true superstar, playing as if you are destitute of a go-to player, of a true superstar. You look at the losses that they experienced. They lost to Nigeria in the exhibition game, lost to Australia, lost to France in the opening game of opening stage play. Why? Because they played as if they didn't have a true superstar. In that loss to France, the first time they met, Durant had 10 points on 12 shots. Lillard had 11 points on 10 shots. Drew Holiday led the team with 18 points on 13 shots. I love Drew Holiday, but he can't take more shots than Kevin Durant. And I said this last week, it came down to one simple adjustment, one simple change. Play like you are playing in NBA-style basketball, where you have a true superstar player and you create a game plan that revolves around that main superstar. And finally, it seemed that against Spain, Greg Popovich and that entire coaching staff finally came to their realization that, hey, you know what? We need to finally actually start creating a game plan around Kevin Durant. Because Kevin Durant is our best player. Enough is enough with this egalitarian approach. Everyone gets to eat. No, KD, take us to the promised land. That was a sentiment that I was vehemently advocating for and was a huge proponent of last week as the tournament started. And you saw with the wins over Spain, with the wins over Australia and now France, that they finally employed that strategy. Why it took them so long, I don't know. But when they finally came to that realization, what happened? Well, Durant drops 29 points, leads the team, and paces them with uh, 29 points on 18 shots, 50% shooting from the floor. The next coast closest player was Jason Tatum, who had a productive night with 19 points. But again, 14 shots. Lillard and Holiday contributed, but it was just 11 and 13 shots. So the shooting disparity, and more importantly, the shots attempted, was the main difference, is that finally the U.S. turned to their best player, and Kevin Durant has clearly been the best player on this team, and said, you know what, the hell with this team-oriented basketball, we're going to play an NBA-style game where we create an offensive scheme surrounding one elite, elite player. And it all came together. And I was thrilled to see personally, I thought that it was imperative that they employ that strategy. And I was thrilled to see that they were finally able to come together and win the fourth straight, their fourth straight gold medal and exact some revenge 
on a French team that had Evan Fournier chirping at them after winning an opening game round matchup. Evan Fournier was chirping at Team USA because he looked like an all-star the first time they played. And so, again, whether or not the timing of when they came to the realization that, hey, KD's the best player, let's just feed him the rock, the reality is they finally reached that point. They finally came to that conclusion, and they were able to put it all together. And again, as I've mentioned, the talent's always been there. There is no reason or excuse for Team USA not winning the Olympics every single time they play. That should never be an excuse or an out. What has to happen is the coaches have to look at themselves in the mirror and say, hey, you know what? Let's allow these talents, let's allow these anomalies, these freaks of athletes to actually play the way that they're comfortable playing. Allow these guys to go take some of these players individually one-on-one. -on -one. It's not a selfish style of basketball when you're the best at it in the world. And so, again, they obviously had an overwhelming amount of talent. They were supposed to win. I'm thrilled that they did. And hopefully now that highlights the blueprint moving forward for this national team of how they need to start conducting business in these national tournaments. Feature your best guys. And more importantly, once you have that team, construct an offensive scheme that allows your number one player to truly be a number one player.